What's up, it's Cinema Show Gun here, and by now, you all already know that Carly Russell finally admitted that she was lying about everything. The only problem is, at least in my opinion, is that Carly was still lying when she admitted that she lied about all of this in the first place. I do not believe for one second that Carly Russell pulled this off alone. And out of all of the hundreds of rumors that are spreading around like wildfire about her right now, she only felt the need to address the rumors about her being at a hotel with some other dude. Hmm, I wonder why those rumors were so important for you to basically dispel. Like, in your statement where you should be focused on apologizing to everyone involved, you made sure that your lawyer got the point across that, no, Carly wasn't in a hotel with some dude. No, uh, uh, if that's what you've heard, if that's what you're thinking, it's not true. Well, I think it's true. I think it's true. Maybe it's not. But the fact that she felt the need for her lawyer to address that Kind of awkward, especially considering the fact that there are so many other rumors about her swirling online as we speak. And then they had the nerve to ask for prayers and forgiveness. How are we supposed to forgive Carly Russell when she still hasn't come out and said what she actually did? All she did was deny that she was at a hotel room with a dude. I do not believe that Carly Russell was out here in the woods somewhere. You know what I mean? So where was she? Who was she with? How did she get away from the scene in under three minutes? I mean, let's just be honest. None of that adds up at all. But we could even take it one step further because did any of you all think about the fact that even though she admitted that she lied, that she obviously has not told law enforcement where she was that entire time. Law enforcement claims that they still don't know where she was and what she did for those 48 hours. And nowhere in her statement does she admit what she did. She basically just tries to cover for anyone else who may be involved. So I find that extremely odd. Like if you're going to apologize and put everything out there, then why didn't you say where you went and what you did while you were missing? And the fact that she still hasn't admitted to where she was or what she did leads me to believe that she was not alone. Because if you were alone in all of this and you're already coming forward with all of the information, why not come forward and say where you were and what you did? Now, I fully believe that law enforcement they know more than what they're saying. You have to understand that tomorrow they're going to talk to Carly's lawyer. So today, I think they were being pretty tight-lipped with their information. They don't want to reveal too much about what they know. But the investigation is ongoing. And they even asked them a question like, hey, what about the parents? And they say that they're looking into it. They're looking into everything that may have transpired over those 48 hours which leads me to believe that at the very least law enforcement is looking into if the parents knew prior to Carly showing up at their front doorstep. But with all of that being said, I wanna play a quick clip from this press conference so you can hear the questions that they asked them and you can hear their responses. And of course, after this clip, I'm gonna be back with more thoughts. Questions as Officer Hale said on call on you, please state your name and your affiliation. Yes, sir. Keith Mims, WAGG 610 100.1 FM Summit Media. Uh, Chief, do we at this time of the Zahula Police Department know the whereabouts of Carly Russell during that 49 uh, hour period that she was supposedly missing? Now, as I said the other day, was talking facts and everything. If I said anything today, it would just be speculation. Actual facts, we do not. Can you tell us where, or excuse me, what her motivation was for doing this, if you can? 
I wish I could tell you. I think only uh, Carly knows that maybe her attorney now, but uh, again, the statement that we received from him does not indicate any. Now, that would strictly be up to the district attorney's office. David Lamb, CBS 42, can you uh, update us so that there is a meeting scheduled for this afternoon with the family, or, or no. when is that meeting? Yeah. Place the no, not uh, a meeting with the attorney, not the family or Carly. We have a meeting scheduled with the attorney, and that will take place some point tomorrow. And there is no meeting with Carly Russell or her family at this point? Not scheduled, no, sir. Well, again, we want to uh, talk to uh, talk to Mr. Anthony tomorrow and uh, and see if he has any uh, any more to discuss about uh, about the case. Uh, we'll certainly be asking if uh, if we'll get an opportunity to uh, again interview uh, Carly like we've wanted to since uh, since she returned. Chief Stephen Quinn, ABC 3340. Yes, sir. Your reaction now, knowing that Carly has admitted that this was made up. Well, I'm I'm glad that we got this. You know, we uh, we certainly laid the facts out uh, to the to the to the you know, to, to you guys and and to the national uh, media that had a lot of interest in this particular case. Uh, uh, the the sad thing is that uh, again there were so many people that uh, that were involved, uh, took this thing very very seriously, and uh, and again, we wanted the focus to be bring her home. She got home. We're very excited about that. Uh, you know, just, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the facts, I think, last uh, Wednesday uh, pretty much showed that uh, we knew that it was, uh, it was a hoax. Lisa. Lisa Crane with OBD and 13. Do you know the extent she went to during this search? And if you don't have a, a dollar figure for us, just the, how big it was for you guys? Well, it was, uh, it was all hands on deck, and, uh, and we don't have a dollar figure yet. But uh, uh, we're, we're certainly working uh, towards getting one. And not only ours, but there'll be uh, there'll be other agencies that uh, that had a lot of uh, a lot of support that they gave us, and had monetary expenses themselves. Jonathan, uh, when JLR investigates, are the parents under in, in investigation? You know, as I said the other day, uh, we were going to try to determine exactly those 49 hours. So right now, you know, and anything's on the table. We're, we we still don't know what happened in those 49 hours. Where she was, did she have any help? We have no idea. You know, I read the statement from Mr. Anthony, and that's all we know. Chief, Chief Mims, uh, uh, WAGG 610, uh, Southern Media. Chief, let me ask you this. What do you think prompted or provoked Carly to uh, do this kind of thing? And um, are there any kind of mental issues that uh, the police department or the public should be concerned about, or just what? You know, not that I'm aware of. I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, this is a very elaborate, this was an elaborate deal. I mean, when you talk about calling a 911 and, and, and being up on the interstate, uh, uh, again, it would all be conjecture. Uh, so really, uh, I don't know. I was hoping that we'd have an opportunity to interview and we'd be able to ask, ask her those questions. Were any others involved in putting this story together for her? Uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, in his statement, says there was not. No, they did not. Back here. Uh, Aaron Lou Love, WBC 13. Um, just for clarification, Carly Russell is not in custody right now. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, last question with David. David Lamb, once again. So, first of all, when did you actually see this letter? And, and second of all, do these admissions and the content of the letter alter the investigation at all? No, not at all. Uh, we'll continue to investigate. We'll still try to determine where those where she was those, during those forty nine hours. But uh, I am glad that we received this. It, it at least puts uh, puts some of the social media super sleuths uh, hopefully at rest for a little bit as far as uh, what everyone the conjecture of what everybody thinks took place. Uh, we know that uh, that uh, by her own admission it didn't happen, and uh, you know we're thankful for that. All right, thank you guys very much. All right, so there's three quick things that I want to touch on right here from that portion of the press conference. For one, when they asked the questions about the parents, the way he answered it made me believe that they are definitely exploring that avenue to see if the parents knew anything at all prior to Carly showing back up at home. And as you all know, if you've been watching my videos, at first, I didn't think the parents knew at all. But the longer it dragged out, I really started thinking about it and I started having these iffy feelings about maybe the parents knew prior, I don't think that they were involved in all of it, 
but I feel like they may have known that she wasn't missing before she showed up at their doorstep. Another important thing that he talked about, or they asked him a question about if he thought that Carly Russell had help. Notice, he did not say that no, he didn't think she had help. He didn't really comment on it at all from his perspective. All he said was, oh, Carly's lawyer said she didn't have help. So he himself, he will not say in good faith that Carly didn't have help because I believe that at the very least, they're still trying to figure out if she did. Maybe they already know she did. Maybe they just suspect she did like everyone else. But he would not come out and say that, no, Carly did not have help. He would not say that. All he said was, oh, well, Carly Russell's lawyer said that she was alone. But I don't believe him just as much as I don't believe Carly Russell herself. And, you know, I knew the questions about mental health would come up because make no mistake about it, Carly Russell... Carly Russell's family and a certain portion of our society, they want to blame mental health for this instead of just, you know, Carly facing the consequences. So I am glad that he hammered home the fact that this was an elaborate plan. This was not a random mental health breakdown. This was an elaborate plan. If, and if you look on Carly Russell's Twitter, it seems as if she was coming up with this plot over a year ago. So it's something that she had already thought of doing, something that she mentioned doing on Twitter, literally. So, you know, this was not just a random, oh, well, you know, I'm having mental health troubles. I'm going to run into the woods after claiming to see a baby. No, this was an elaborate plan. I believe that she used the baby situation. Oh, I saw a kid on the side of the road to drag more attention, to bring more attention to her. Because if she simply wanted to fake a kidnapping, if she wanted to fake a disappearance and disappear for a couple of days, she could have just done so. She did not have to involve a fake baby. She used that baby as bait to get more attention because let's be honest, if the baby was never involved in the story, this story would have never have gotten as big as it did. And she knows that. So in many ways, like I said on Twitter a while back, a baby was used as bait for the story, just not in the way we thought. I'll say that again. A baby was used as bait, but the baby wasn't used to bait Carly Russell into getting kidnapped. Carly Russell used the baby to bait us in to being interested in her fake kidnapping. That's exactly what happened. But as of right now, I'm going to think more about this press conference I got a lot to say, but I don't want to, you know, go too ham. So I'm going to reel myself in a little bit, get another sip of this drink. I hope you all have a good day. Make sure you drop all of your thoughts about this down in the comments. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll be talking to you all really soon in the next video.